So one of the things that I love about AI filmmaking and video is how rapidly it's evolving. But that also means that we're constantly, you know, having to shift and update our workflows. And because it's such a general technology, I mean, there are hundreds of different approaches and use cases. So today we're going to walk through one of them. In my opinion, kind of the latest and greatest, definitely the one that provides you with the most cinematic outputs. Plus, I've got a reference in this video that you are definitely going to want to bookmark. It is, dare I say, a game changer for your prompts. So kicking off at the top, this method is building off something that I talked about in last week's newsletter. Oh, you didn't know there was a newsletter? Well, that's fair because there's only been one issue so far. We'll talk more about it later, but if you want to sign up for it, the link is down below. Anyhow, in the pro tip section of the inaugural newsletter, I went over friend of the channel PJ Ace's Legend of Zelda trailer workflow. We're going to use this as a base template, but of course, I, you know, I added some spices to it. I think that's important to note, like I'm not Columbusing anything here. We're all building off of each other's work and discoveries. Learn something, tweak it, share it. There's no point in hoarding information because, well, frankly, a year from now, even this method is going to be outdated. The next important thing before we fully dive in, there are, of course, a few ingredients that we're using here. The main big one being Nano Banana Pro. This is a holy image to video workflow. And finally, I'm going to be presenting this whole thing over on Flora. You don't have to use Flora. You can use anything that you want to accomplish this. I'm just using Flora for, well, three reasons. One, I like it. Two, I had a bunch of credits there. And three, well, I mean, it is the murder board, which look, I know not all of you love the node-based murder boards, but in this case, I actually think it really works well to visually show you the workflow. To be clear, this video is not sponsored by Flora. In fact, they don't even know that I'm making this, so I say what I want. So moving on to the main course. You guys know that I like to put together a little proof of concepts for these tutorials. Uh, so let's go check in with Captain Renfield in his latest adventure on the high seas. Man the cannons! We're gonna die! Follow the orders! It's too late, Captain. The ship is going down! You know, if there's one thing we've learned, if you board a boat and Captain Renfield is at the helm, you should probably get back to land. What's kind of crazy is that this whole thing just begins with two images. Uh, of course, a reference image of Captain Renfield, uh, and then the deck of a pirate ship that was generated up in Mid Journey. It's not even really that great an image in all honesty. Uh, from there, and again, don't get lost in the murder board of all of this. It's just a really good way to visually showcase everything. We're taking both of these two images and then going over to a node here that is really just chat gpt 5.2 you can use gemini uh you can use uh, claude you can use pretty much any uh llm that you want from there we have a pretty significant template prompt that we provide to the llm uh this is page one this is page two uh, you can screenshot and ocr this if you want but i will also provide it in this week's newsletter making it easy for you to copy and paste yeah you see what i did there can't even get mad at me because i know that you know and you know that i know now what's kind of cool about this format is that it actually has a top header section where you describe what is happening, like what the scenario is. And then from there, uh, the LLM will figure out, uh, you know, essentially how to populate that prompt. And despite, you know, the kind of massive amount of information that this thing is trying to pack in, it's actually built to output, um, you know, prompts around 2,800 characters. What I've discovered, particularly with Nano Banana Pro, when you start bumping up that character or token limit, well, that's where you start running into problems. We'll take a look at that a little later on. So now that we have our LLM buddy essentially filling in our crazy long prompts, and to note, uh, because each one of these frames actually has its own description in it, you can go through and change them if you want to. Uh, obviously from there, we just plug that along with our reference images, that is very important, uh, over to Nano Banana. Now, one of the things that I think uh, makes this extra cinematic is by utilizing Nano Banana Pro in a 21 by nine format. Uh, for some reason, this is mostly available via API for whatever reason reason, even on Flow, which is Google's filmmaking platform, uh, we're still limited to 16 by 9. That said, you can generally find a 21.9 option on any of the majors. Uh, obviously here on Flora, uh, over on FreePick, Leonardo has it, Recraft has it. Um, so yeah, basically like anywhere outside of Google, you have a native 21.9 option. From here, I think most of you know the drill. It's just, you know, re-rolling and tweaking your prompt a bunch. Uh, I will note 
Uh, Captain Renfield in particular is always a bit problematic for me. Nano Banana always wants to turn him into Jack Sparrow or occasionally weirdly Tom Hardy. Admittedly, Renfield is a bit of a stock character. I mean, not to me, but uh, you know, anytime that you plug him into an image generator or editor, uh, the second it sees pirate, it's like, oh, you mean Jack Sparrow, Captain of the Black Pearl. But that does seem to be a bit of a specific pirate problem. Like I don't run into this with Flamethrower Girl, who yes, we will see later on in this video. Moving back to our main project page, you will note that there is no connecting line between our two by two generations and our next step. Um, it's actually kind of one of the reasons that I really like working in this murder board fashion. Um, yeah, there is no connector here because what we need to do here is crop each one of our shots. Now, technically, I guess you could do this in Nano Banana, but to me, it feels like a bit of a waste of credits. I mean, the easiest thing to do is just, you know, just crop it, just take it over to, you know, whatever image, traditional image editor uh, you use and just, you know, crop it and then save it out again. Once we have our cropped image, and you may find this part optional, but a good practice is to take uh, that image and then just run it back through Nano Banana again with a like an image enhancement prompt. Because we initially began in that two by two grid and we're essentially cropping that out. I mean, the image comes in a little bit on the mushy side. So by running this prompt, this is actually PJ's original prompt. I didn't tweak it or mess with it because it works pretty well. We end up with this as an output. And if you kind of AB the two of them, yeah, for sure, the prompt does have an effect. Once we have our slightly cleaned up image, uh, it's back over to another LLM uh, with a template that I built out. So once again, here is the prompt template. You can feel free to screenshot it, or uh, once again, it'll be in the newsletter this week. Uh, again, the important part here is that we do have a user input section where we can describe what action we want to have taken, and then additionally, dialogue as well if the video model supports dialogue. From there, you take that output prompt and bring it into, well, I mean, to be honest, any video generator that you want. I've been using Kling 2.6 a lot more lately. Um, I think it's A, very good. Um, has a lot of great motion. And interestingly, I, although not officially outputting at 21.9, if you give it a 21 by nine image, it will respect that aspect ratio. I do feel the need to point out that no matter how tight your prompt template is or how tight your prompt is, like it's still image to video. You're still gonna get some like weird wonky results. Uh, for example, here's three shots that I put together for like a quick flamethrower girl example. And our middle shot where I just wanted her to smile at the thought of the oncoming battle. Well, I mean, she goes like full on Hulk mode here. That said, tweaking the prompt in a couple of re-rolls, well, we ended up with this. Yeah, you never wanna be on the business end of that flamethrower. Now, for some other jazz that we can throw on top of all of this, including uh, some homebrew camera selection and a really killer resource for you, uh, and I should point out, when I say homebrew camera selection, I mean, yeah, we kind of are talking about like the Higgsfield Cinema Studio thing. And look, to be clear, I'm not taking shots at it at all. In fact, I actually think it's a pretty cool and smart feature, but I'm also like 99% sure that this is, you know, it's a very nice and pretty interface that essentially is triggering a nano banana prompt. Again, not taking anything away from it. I actually think it's a pretty smart feature, but do keep in mind that Nano Banana Pro or really any image generator isn't giving you a like full accurate representation of the lens, camera, f-stops, etc. Uh, these are just keywords that are getting you into the ballpark. For example, friend of the channel, Gio Garag, gives us this image, which was prompted with the presets of an Ari Alexa 35 millimeter, uh, a Hawk 5 uh, anamorphic lens uh, 50 millimeter. Now, it just so happens that he's actually used that exact same setup, and this is a screenshot from, well, the, the real version of that rig. And again, not that there's like anything necessarily wrong about uh, the generated output. So again, what this really is, is more of a ballpark than anything. Uh, you know, the plus side is that once you understand that conceptually, you can go into even more obscure or personalized directions if you want. For example, revisiting our initial base two by two prompt with Flamethrower Girl and while well, this mid-journey generated hangar bay, uh, we end up with this. And again, this is just the base template. Um, I did cut it together, so let's take a quick look at the eight seconds that I got out of three of these shots. So now if we wanted to get a little bit of that cinema studio spank, 
All we have to do is really add some keywords to the top of our prompt. Uh, in this case, we're going with a Panavision Millennium uh, DXL2 with a Zeiss Prime lens at 14 millimeters at 1.4 uh, f-stops or t-stops, I guess. Um, and as we can see, I mean, yeah, there is definitely a difference between our base prompt and this. Um, it definitely gets that 14 millimeter look here, kind of loses it in some other spots. Um, f1.4, sure, maybe. I mean, yeah, again, ballpark. Swapping out for an IMAX camera with, once again, the uh, Hawk 5 anamorphic lens, uh, this time at f11. Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely does show that it, it it's listening, it's making a difference. The framing here is different. It definitely looks more much more like, like IMAX framing. What's great about doing it manually and not with the preset is, well, I mean, you can do anything. For example, like an early 2000s Sony VFX 1000 uh, DV cam with a fish eye. This is the uh, skater video weapon of choice. Uh, and as you can see, we're still getting everything uh, that uh, all of the action that's supposed to be occurring within the prompt just kind of looks like it was captured again on a VFX 1000 with the fish eye lens. But here is where we're going to kick things up a notch with one of the coolest resources I've run across. This one comes to us via a channel called Flesh Syntax. I don't, I don't know the the origin or the meaning of that name. Uh, I just think it's kind of cool. It sounds very like Cronenbergian. Uh, anyhow, he ended up doing a review on Higgsfield. It is a great video. I'll have it linked down below. And in that video, well, he introduced me to a site called Shot Deck, and oh man, it's great. So this is a crazy packed resource of technical information on like thousands of films and like hundreds of shots in those films. So uh, this is, well, this is from Sinners, but if you click into any shot, man, is it packed with information. I mean, everything from the film stock, the lens, the camera, um, frame size, shot type. I mean, like, again, I mean, you can read, it's all there. Um, so yeah, really, really great resource. And again, kind of a ridiculous amount of titles. Uh, again, we're only up to, we'll see here. I mean, it just keeps going. Now, I do want to point out, I am not affiliated with Shot Deck at all. There is subscription pricing here. That said, uh, apparently there's also a free two-week trial. No credit card required, which is what I did. Um, so, yeah, I mean, take that as you will. So what can we do with this shot deck information? Well, initially my thought was like just grabbing a screenshot of the open the pod bay doors howl scene from 2001, uh, just to plug it directly into like the prompt and the and nano banana and let it rip. Unfortunately, it didn't really pick up too much. Again, this is what I was talking about early in the video with essentially like context overloading nano banana slightly better results utilizing the information for this shot from Andor. But as you can see, the nano banana output, I mean, well, it's not A, it's not really following directions and B, I mean, it kind of looks a bit on the bland side. The trick I found that does seem to work is take that shot information and then just have an LLM extract all of the information along with the color hex codes of that uh, particular shot and then just add that into your prompt. So here's where you can really see the difference. On the bottom, we have our base two by two prompt, and then above it, our andorized version of it. Um, and in that version, we are still getting all of the things that we asked for in our prompt. Um, it's just that we're getting a lot more, especially uh, the color palette has been applied in here. So yeah, um, definitely a very handy trick here. If you're feeling particularly experimental or want to get creative with it, I mean, there's like a ton of stuff that you can do here. Uh, I did give it like the Wes Anderson, I think it's Asteroid City. Um, it's a bit of a cheat there. I mean, anytime that you do Wes Anderson, it's going to come out very Wes Anderson-y. But um, yeah, I mean, I, this kind of made me chuckle. I'm not going to say it's necessarily perfect. In fact, actually taking this shot from Bullet Train and applying that, we ended up with this, which, um, I mean, it looks like it's trying to do the job. It's just also a bit of a mess. But if you lean into it, you can end up with some pretty pretty interesting and wacky stuff. Uh, for example, taking this shot from Point Blank, the Lee Marvin crime revenge film, we end up with these shots, which uh, to be honest, I mean, I kind of love. Or by taking this shot from the Richard Donner version of Superman and applying that, we end up with this, which really surprised me. Uh, and I also kind of absolutely love. Again, a lot of that is more on the experimental side, but hey, I mean, experimental is how we develop new workflows. So yeah, if you've got any questions or comments, please drop them down below. And again, please do sign up for the newsletter. The prompts will go out in the next issue. Uh, the plan there is to have the newsletter really serve as a supplement to the channel. So if you do like these videos, uh, chances are you will be happy with the inbox notification. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.